Good morning. It is good to see you this morning. A beautiful weekend to celebrate and worship together. I'm glad you're here. Uh, when you came in, you should have been given a bulletin. Inside that bulletin are upcoming announcements and activities that you'll want to be aware of. Do want to uh, just make one correction that is, that is in there. We had a communication situation. Uh, next Sunday morning, we are having all Sunday school class breakfast. So that's all. Kids, adults, and everyone. So next Sunday morning, instead of going to your Sunday school class, you go to Fellowship Hall. All right, we will have breakfast there for you. And uh, we want to recognize our teachers and a few other things that we're going to do at that. So please make every effort to be there. But that starts at 930. Okay, so if you come at nine o'clock in the bulletin, it says nine o'clock. But if you come at nine o'clock, I'm going to put you to work. So you're welcome to come. Uh, but uh, we, will, we will begin at 9.30. You don't need to be there any earlier than 9.30. Uh, but if you'll be there at 9.30, and, and it's, it's for all of our Sunday school classes. So Sunday school teachers, you got a week off from teaching. Okay? Um, but make sure your class is there and well represented when we get, get together next Sunday. All right? Uh, if you're a guest with us this morning, we're extremely grateful for your presence. Look forward to getting to know you better, and uh, we're thankful that God has brought you into our fellowship. Hope that you experience a friendly, warm place, because we believe that's what we are, and we try to be that way, and I think uh, our church family does a pretty good job at that. But uh, as we celebrate a Memorial Day weekend, I know we've got lots of folks out and about doing other things this weekend out of town. Uh, but we're glad that you're here, and we look forward to what God has to share to us this morning. I hope you came with an expectation of God speaking to you this morning, because he has every intent to do that. And I'm looking forward to what he has to say to us. Let me open us with a word of prayer, and we'll get started in our worship service. Father God, we thank you this morning for the opportunity of worship and gathering together in your presence to lift your name on high. We pray, Lord, that you would just guide and direct our time together. Prepare our hearts and minds now as we lift our voices in praise to you, as we sing hymns and, and praise songs and, and, Lord, just spend time worshiping you. I pray that you would just prepare our hearts and minds to receive what you want to say to us through your word as we study that as well. Lord, be glorified in our worship of you. And more than anything else, we thank you. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your provision in our lives of how you take care of us, of how you watch over us, and how you bless us. We love you, Lord. May you receive all the glory, honor, and praise of all that happens here this day. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Memorial Day weekend is a time for us to remember and reflect on God's many blessings in our own lives and also how he has blessed us through our country and our freedom. Let's stand together as we sing, My Eyes Have Seen the Glory. My eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. He is trampling out the vintage where the grapes are grass are grown. He has loosed the faithful light.
I could have the boys and girls come join me up front, please. Come on up, guys. Just have a seat right out here. Come on up, guys. There they come, there they come. All right. I got something I want to show you. You know what this is? It's a cross. Now, when you see a cross, what do you think of? Jesus dying on the cross. Why did he do that? To save us from our sins. To free us from our sins. And he did it because he loved us so much. Now, you know, normally you would think if this is the cross, if, if, if the cross is where Jesus died, that we wouldn't want to celebrate the cross very much. Because we don't, we don't think of, of celebrating the death of our Savior, but that was required. It was necessary for him to die on the cross for us to be saved from our sins. And so the cross acts a little bit like a memorial. When we see a cross, we think of Jesus, just like you guys did, and we think about how he died on the cross to save us from our sins, just like you guys did, and it reminds us how much God loves us. And so the cross becomes an important thing, an item, a symbol to remind us of how much God loves us. And so we're talking today about some things like that, like the cross, things that remind us of important events that took place in our lives. You know, one of the things that, uh, that happens in the life of a Christian is you follow in believer's baptism. And when we celebrate someone, when they follow in believer's baptism after asking Jesus into their heart, and we baptize them, we also give them a, a, a picture and a plaque and a certificate of baptism showing that, that they were baptized. And it's something that they can hang on their wall, and they hang that on their wall to remind them so that when they see that, they remember of how much God loves them and of when they were baptized. We celebrate Memorial Day this weekend, and it's a fun time. We get to do a lot of outdoor things, and it it's mar kind of marks the beginning of summer. You guys are ready for summer, aren't you? Looking forward to it, having some fun. You don't like the heat, do you? <laughs> and that's right, and summer's, summer's already begun with some vacations getting to start and having fun and things like that. And, and you like, you enjoy summer, but Memorial Day kind of marks the beginning of summer a lot of times. It's already been pretty hot but it's going to be a great weekend, and we've already had a great weekend, and tomorrow we get to celebrate a little bit. But we're going to talk about that a little bit more. We're going to talk about things like the cross and the symbol that it is to remind us of, of an event that took place that was a major impact in our lives. And so I want you guys to listen this morning. We're going to sing about, there's a key word that we're going to use, and we're going to sing a song about it here in a few minutes. And then you're going to hear it out of the Word of God when I read it. And I want you to see if you can catch what that word is. And then after the service is over, I'm always standing at the back door. When you guys come past me, I want you to see if you can remember what that word is that we use today. It's an unusual word. It's kind of a name, and it's an unusual one. But I want you to listen for it. And then when you're leaving after service today, I want you to see if you can tell me before you leave what that word is. Okay? Deal? All right. Let's go back and have a seat. We're going to sing some more. And I want to hear you guys sing loud because you guys know these songs.
Let's pray together. Father, we're grateful for your love for us. We thank you so much for giving us a country that we have the freedom to, to be here today, to worship together as your people. Father, today as we take up the tithes and offerings, Father, we, we remember your blessings of life. And we just want to give back today, Father, the things that you've asked us to give back to you, Father, just a portion of your many blessings. We pray that you would use these, Father, uh, to honor, glorify yourself and your kingdom's work. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, ladies, for that. I invite everyone to sing with, with me, Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing. Oh, 
Well, tomorrow is a national holiday, and I'm confident that most of us know what it is. As we've already discussed it a little bit with the boys and girls while they were up front, it is Memorial Day, a day marked with flags, food, and fun. We tend, we tend to use the word celebrate with holidays, but honestly, I don't think that fits this one very well. Now, that may have caught you off guard a little bit. Because it's Memorial Day, let's celebrate. Originating as Decorations Day in 1868, following the Civil War, Memorial Day is intended to remember those who gave the ultimate sacrifice for this country. It is meant to remember those who gave their life serving this nation. That's what Memorial Day is. Now, I'm I'm probably no different than anybody else. We tend to use Memorial Day as a great kickoff for summer of barbecues, of family gatherings, of food and fun, and opening opening the swimming pools up and and getting the horseshoes out and doing all kinds of activities. But I think, it, I think it wise for us to consider what the day is intended to be and how we interact with that. Decorations Day, as it began in 1868, was a day of healing was a day of calling for unity in a nation that had been divided. You know, when when people are divided, they're ready to attack at any moment. Probably a lot like we have become as a nation in the recent years, where it really doesn't matter whether we agree with an issue or not, it matters whether we agree with a person or not and whether we like them. We have become very much divided. You know how it goes. If there's someone who has rubbed you wrong, someone who over the course of time you have just decided to separate yourself from, it doesn't matter what they say, you disagree. That's what divided and division does to us. And that's what had happened. And President Lincoln saw that. He saw a nation that was so divided, family against family, brother against brother, for so many years. The question was, could it ever be overcome? And I'll be honest with you, I've kind of asked that question of myself in these recent years. Is there hope for our nation? Is there hope that we can overcome the divide that we are experiencing right now? So much so that, you know, if, if, if you were that mad at me and upset with me when I said this candle is white, you'd find a reason to disagree. How sad is that? that we allow ourselves to get to a position in life where we are so divided that we refuse to agree on anything even when we know it to be fact. That's where the origination of this holiday began. In a battlefield where soldiers were buried together from opposing sides in hopes of a healing of a nation. Many times on Memorial Day, and and I I did not do it today simply because of what I wanted wanted us to focus on. Many times on Memorial Day, we would have our military stand and be honored. 
And I do honor those of you who have served in the military, and we are grateful for your service. But if I'm honest, what tomorrow is about is about those who lost their lives in the service to this nation. It's a remembrance of them, not of us. Tomorrow isn't meant to be about us. It's meant to call us to a remembrance of the ultimate sacrifice that was given for the freedoms that we experience on a regular basis. I said, basically, you know, for us, it's flags, food, and fun. While the flag is appropriate for this day, it serves to remind us, though, of these men and women who gave their lives. Tomorrow, flags are to be flown at half-mast from sunrise until noon. See, some traditions we have go by the wayside because we don't remember why we have them. There are times when I wonder, I'll be driving down the street and, and I'll see a business or, or a place that has a flag and they've got it flying at half-mast, and sometimes I'm wondering, why is that at half-mast? Flying a flag at half-mast is called from the administrative branch of our governments for specific reasons. Tomorrow is a standing day for flying flags at half-mast, but only from sunrise until noon to honor those who gave their lives as the ultimate sacrifice for the freedoms that we experience. At noon, flags are to be raised to full mast. And there is a symbolism there of raising those individuals who gave their lives, of raising them up as examples, of raising them up and reminding us of what it was that they gave their lives for. Now, many of you have lived long enough to see this nation look at different situations, different wars, and have opinions about them. And some are negative. But I call you today to step above that. It doesn't matter whether it was a war that you don't believe in or not. If a member of our society, if a member of our nation served this country in one of our armed forces and fought in one of those wars, whether you agree with that war or not, and they lost their lives, they died for this country, and you need to honor them. We need to put the divisions aside and remember who we are. And so tomorrow at noon, flags will be raised in celebration of the freedoms that we have in remembrance of those who did lose their lives. Raising them up by those of us who are still here and us committing not to allow their sacrifice to be in vain. This is a worthy day of remembrance. This morning, I want to consider what makes something worthy of remembering. What events in your life are worthy of remembering? And how do we do that? We take our consideration this morning from the prophet Samuel and his leadership with the children of Israel and a memorial. So if you would, open your Bibles to 1 Samuel chapter 7. We will find a time when the Israelites have entered into the promised land, have taken that which God has entrusted to their care, and are living in towns that they did not build, with walls they did not erect, with gardens they may not have planted in the initial stages. They have now taken ownership of that. They have now taken the responsibility to plant those gardens, to build more cities and houses to live the life that God has entrusted to their care, trying to follow God's leadership as their king. But they have enemies. One of the greatest enemies for, for especially the boys and girls 
in all of us. One of the greatest enemies that we remember of the children of Israel are the Philistines. Why? Well, probably because of David and Goliath and the role the Philistines played there. But I want us to look at a situation involving the Philistines here in 1 Samuel chapter 7 as we talk about this idea of memorials. We begin with verse 7, if you'll follow along as I read. Now when the Philistines heard that the sons of Israel had gathered to Mizpah, the lords of the Philistines went up against Israel. And when the sons of Israel heard it, they were afraid of the Philistines. The sons of Israel said to Samuel, Do not cease to cry to the Lord our God for us, that he may save us from the hand of the Philistines. Samuel took a suckling lamb and offered it for a whole burnt offering to the Lord. And Samuel cried to the Lord for Israel, and the Lord answered him. Now Samuel was offering up the burnt offering, and the Philistines drew near to the battle against Israel. But the Lord thundered with a great thunder on that day against the Philistines and confused them so that they were routed before Israel. The men of Israel went out of Mizpah and pursued the Philistines and struck them down as far as below beth -car. Then T Samuel took a stone and set it between Mizpah and Shen and named it Ebenezer saying, Thus far, the Lord has helped us. So the Philistines were subdued, and they did not come any more with the border, within the border of Israel. And the hand of the Lord was against the Philistines all the days of Samuel. The cities which the Philistines had taken from Israel were restored to Israel, from Ekron even to Gath. And Israel delivered their territory from the hand of the Philistines, so there was peace between Israel and the Amorites. Would you pray with me? Father God, as we come before you right now, we are grateful. We are grateful for the stories which we remember of your faithfulness, of your power, of your presence. Stories from the Word of God that you have given us to remember for all times, but also, Lord, the stories of your involvement in our lives. Help us to remember. Help us to hold firmly to what you have done, knowing that you intend to continue. Lord, speak to us through this passage this morning. Help us to gain understanding and wisdom that will mold and shape us into who we are to become because you're not through with us yet. You still have intentions for our lives, for the future, for the days ahead of what you're going to do in and through us. And as a church, you have those intentions as well. So we ask this morning that you would just speak to us clearly. Give us that discernment that only you can. We ask in Jesus' name, amen. So let's talk about for a minute the making for a memorial. The making for a memorial. There are five things that I find in this passage when we talk about the making of a memorial that are very important. Steps along the way. Number one is this, see the need. For the Israelites, they saw the need as the Philistines were coming up against them. They saw the need for God's help. They knew they couldn't do it themselves. Now, we have learned in our society very clearly that this, this idea of seeing the need is a very important aspect of all sorts in our lives, in every aspect of our life. See, some of you are facing situations right now that are very difficult and challenging. There are things going on in your life that you're not sure how it's going to play out and what the future is going to be. You're struggling a little bit right now. It may be finances. It may be relationships. It may be health. But the one thing as followers of Jesus that we need to understand is we need to see what the need really is. We need to quit trying to take the approach that I can handle it. 
I can take care of it. Because you know what? In this life, I don't have everything I need in myself, by myself, to meet all the needs that I have. I have gone through stages in my life where, where I believed God was calling us certain directions. As a pastor, as being called to the ministry, one of, one of the challenges is listening to God, knowing where He is leading and where He is directing, what His intentions and plans are. Because I know that no matter where God leads me, it will be better than anywhere I could take myself. And I could come up with some pretty good places to take myself. There are some places that sound like it would be great. You know, let's... This is, this is a boy who grew up in the state of Washington, okay? Um, the temperature yesterday is not something that I saw growing up. You know, I am, I am so grateful right now that, that there are these vents blowing this cool air out because when I first moved to Missouri um, I was I was convinced that you guys just didn't know how to speak and pronounce the word correctly uh, it, it was more of misery you know when you get a hundred degrees and a hundred percent humidity it's miserable And growing up in the state of Washington, you know, we didn't have air conditioning, okay? You didn't have it in the car. You didn't have it in the house. You wanted some cool air, you opened the windows. You open the windows here, and your house turns into a sauna. I'm right where God wants me. I have absolutely no doubt about that. See, recognizing the needs in your life is an important aspect no matter where you're at you may think you've got all the answers but you need to step back and recognize your need for God and I'm not just talking about your salvation I'm talking about in every aspect of your life of what the week ahead holds because there are things that you're going to encounter this next week that you're not ready for. But you know what? God is. God's got it all taken care of if you will recognize your need. So the first thing when we talk about memorials, we need to see the need. Now I mentioned Abraham Lincoln. You know what the need was that he saw? The unity of this nation. That's what he was focused on. The healing and the unity. That's what Decorations Day for, for him was. That was the purpose behind it. The second thing that happens here in this passage is we need to cry to the Lord. Okay, seeing a need is fine. What are you going to do about it? Sometimes prayer is our last resort. Forgive me, I love you dearly, but if prayer is your last resort, shame on you. You don't understand the power of prayer if that's your last resort. That better be your first resort. That better be the first thing that you do. Stop and cry to the Lord. You have a need, you've got a God who loves you, who wants to take care of you, who wants to provide for you, who wants to walk you through whatever it is that you're facing. But you need to ask for help. You need to recognize that he's there and wants to help you. Quit trying to handle it yourself. Yes, I know. We're taught to pull, our, pull ourselves up by our bootstraps. We're taught to take care of ourselves. We're taught to handle it. You know, we, we, we tell our boys, grow up, be a man, take care of it. You know, one of the best postures a man can have is on his knees before the Lord. You want to find success in life? You want those needs to be met? Get on your knees before the Lord. Cry 
out to him. The Israelites saw their need, they saw their weaknesses, they saw their shortcomings, and they were smart enough to call on Samuel to call out to the Lord. Now, one of the things I would would have said to them at that point is, yes, Samuel can call out to the Lord on your behalf, but how about you doing a little bit of that too? Sometimes we, we leave it to other people. We need to call out to the Lord. When you ask me to pray about something that's going on in your life, I hope you're praying about it too. Because we need God. That's the only way we're going to get through. Number three, in this process of of the making of a memorial, is to recognize the hand of God. Okay, we've seen the need. We've cried out to the Lord. Now you need to recognize when God acts. Many of you received the uh, prayer text that we had this past week as someone uh, associated with the church went in for a, a biopsy to get the biopsy results. That's a scary thing, isn't it? Those of you who have had a biopsy on something, going to see the doctor to see what the results are is a scary thing. And we were called to pray. And I believe many of you did. You know why I believe that? Because I found what the answer that followed in the prayer text that you got that followed that. That the results came back that everything is good. Recognize the hand of God. When God works, recognize it. Give Him the credit and the praise for what he has done. You know, one of of the dangers as followers of Christ that we can encounter is we may do a good job of, of seeing the need, and we may even do a good job of crying out to the Lord, but then when God takes care of it, we just kind of go, made it through that one. Do you recognize what God is doing in your life? I'm not talking about the things that that you may not see. You know, in in my family, a lot of times we'll we'll discuss some of these things. I know we're we're a bit abnormal, but but we'll discuss some of these things. Like when we when we head out, last year we made it. We made it on vacation last year. The two years prior to that, every time we left town, we had a blowout. And, and it was frustrating. I mean, we were heading, we were heading to uh, Texas two years ago. We got across the Kansas border before the tire exploded. And we're on the side of the highway. Great way to start a vacation, isn't it? And yet, part of our discussion as a family is recognizing that sometimes we don't recognize what God is doing. I can get, I can get a little bit upset and worked up over a situation like that, and how much time did we lose? Well, we, we lost an hour on the highway getting the tire taken care of. We were right. There wasn't a shoulder anyway. Then another hour at the tire store getting a new tire put on so now we're at least two plus hours behind schedule and we haven't even gotten out of town that can be a little bit frustrating but how many times have you been late and come across an accident on your way how do you know that had you not been late you wouldn't have been right in the middle of it God may have been protecting you. But in this situation, I'm not even talking about situations that that you don't see. I'm talking about the ones that are evident. When you pray for something and God answers that prayer, do you recognize that? Do you take time to actually stop and recognize the hand of God at work in your life? 
For example, the celebration, if, if we use that word, of Memorial Day tomorrow is the freedom that you have because someone else has given their life for the freedoms that we have in this nation. Do you stop and recognize that? Do you stop and recognize God's answered prayers in your life? And when you do that, then we get to step number four. Establish a memorial. Boys and girls, listen real close, because here's where you wanted to hear. You establish a memorial. Tomorrow, for our nation, is a memorial. It is a day. It is a holiday set aside to remember for the Israelites Samuel took a stone and raised it up as a memorial and he called it an Ebenezer I always I always wondered when I first when I first started getting involved in church and and once in a great while we'd we'd sing that song oh Come now, fount of every blessing. Verse number two, here I raise my Ebenezer. I raise my what? Some, sometimes we, we throw things out there and they become tradition and we don't even know what they are, what they mean. This was a memorial to remember what God did that day of delivering the Israelites this wasn't, this wasn't a situation where the Israelites were ready for battle and they thought, you know, we ought to go to God and make sure this... They were terrified. They were sure they were going to be overrun and they cried to the Lord and the Lord took care of them. And so a memorial is set up to remember what God did that day. You know, the, the cross is similar to that Ebenezer. It's meant to remind us. I'll be honest with you, when I first became a Christian and I first got involved in church, and, and several churches that I have been to and maybe some that you have been to, a lot of times behind the baptistry, there'll be a cross on the wall. And as a young Christian, when I first started going, I thought to myself, I understand what was done on the cross and I am thankful for that but why are we why are we setting the cross everywhere that's where Jesus was killed I don't like the cross the cross was where the Son of God was crucified was nailed to it died and gave his life on that cross and I had a hard time initially with that idea until I stopped and came to the understanding and realization of, of what it was intended to do. It was intended to remind me of how much God loved me. Just as these boys and girls, they knew what the cross was. They knew that's where Jesus died. And he died for my sins, to save us from our sins. I'm so proud of the, those boys and girls knowing that and being able to give that answer just based on a little piece of wood in the shape of a cross. So I guess as a memorial, it's doing its job, isn't it? It's having the effect that it needs to. When you see a need in your life, when you cry out to the Lord, when you recognize the hand of God in action, you can establish a memorial. So you remember. Memorials can come in a variety of ways. You know, one of, the, one of the ways that I encourage people to have a memorial is to have a prayer journal. You may say, well, how is a prayer journal a memorial? Well, here's how. If you have a prayer journal and you go through that on a regular basis and you list the things you're praying for, you know, maybe, maybe every day you pray for certain family members and you pray for different people that are important in different situations and maybe every so many days you pray for different friends. 
Maybe once a week you pray for specific situations that you know of and you keep a journal of that of just here's what I'm praying for today or here's what I'm praying for weekly or every few days. And you keep a journal of that. And, and if you're keeping that journal, one of the things that I encourage you to do is when God answers a prayer, write that down next to that prayer. Here's how God answered it. Because see, then you can go back and look. Maybe in times where you're struggling with your faith a little bit because life has gotten difficult. You open that prayer journal up and you go back and you read about how you prayed for this friend who had cancer or who, who was experiencing a difficult situation and, and God answered that prayer and you've got that written down there of how God answered that prayer. Do you remember sometimes God answered your prayers? When you remember when God specifically answered your prayers, what does it do? What does it do for your faith in that moment? Doesn't it embolden that faith? Doesn't it remind you that God is faithful? That God wants to fulfill the promises that he's given to you? That God is there for you? That God is walking along your side to take care of you? And no matter what you're dealing with right now, God's there with you now too. See, it acts as a memorial reminding us of how God has met our needs when we've called out to him. Now, we're talking about the idea of making for a memorial, and you may, you may be ready to stop there. You've established a memorial. But there's one more thing that happens in this passage, and it's one more thing that I think we lose track of and we do not do often enough. Point number five, rest in the Lord. Rest in the Lord. We don't do that enough. We're too busy. Got too many things going on. Got too many happenings in our lives. Sad to say, some of us live crisis to crisis. Can some of you identify with that? We don't stop and rest in the Lord enough. If God has just taken care of a major issue in your life, you need to stop and rest in it. You need to enjoy it. You need to experience it. God isn't there as, a, as just a safety net, as just an insurance policy, as just someone who's going to meet this need so you can move on to the next. That's not God's intention. That's not who He wants to be in your life. He wants to be... Well, He wants, he wants it to be a little bit like what, what we do with Memorial Day. You know, one of the things that we do have right with Memorial Day is we live our freedom. We celebrate and live it. That's, that's a little bit of, of, of what we have turned it into. We can gather together with friends and family and have food and have fun. We can do what we want to do. We're not controlled by a government that has its thumb upon us, telling us what we can and can't do. We can gather together and worship freely like this, sing praise to the Lord. See, living that out, that's part of the same idea of resting in the Lord. If you look here, because the Israelites called upon God in this time of need, God secured their borders. He restored to them what was lost and protected them. See, here's, here's part, of, part of what we need to realize is God's protection wants to surround us. God wants to keep his protecting hand upon us if we will recognize and remember who he is and what he has done for us. But too often, 
we take what he does and we head right on into the next crisis of our own making rather than resting in the Lord. We have done this as a nation and set aside the last Monday of May to remember Memorial Day. As followers of Christ, we have done this also and need to regularly mark and remember. For example, do you remember when Jesus saved you? Some of you may be similar to me. I remember the day. November 18th, when I prayed and asked Jesus to be my personal Lord and Savior. Spiritual birthday. Nobody gives me presents, though. But I got the greatest gift I could ever give. Get. God loved me so much, he gave his only son that I could be a part of his family through the sacrifice that Jesus made. There will be more opportunities to make memorials in the days ahead. In your life, in the life of our church, there will be times that we need to remember. I guess the celebration of this event needs to include the last item of this process, probably the most, resting in the Lord. Resting in the Lord comes with a remembrance of what God has done. Resting in the Lord in your salvation. Are you living that type of a life? See, let me bring it down to this as we come to a close. The marking of your salvation, of coming to know Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, that's a big deal. But I wonder how many of us are resting in the Lord in that. Or are you still struggling with sin having control over your life? See, you should not be. Oh, I'm not saying you're perfect. I'm not saying that you never make a mistake anymore. But what I'm saying is sin no longer is to have control over your life. Sin no longer is to be the master of you. You have been freed from that. You need to live it. You need to live like you're free. We aren't living by rules and regulations. We're living in freedom. See, rules... Rules are there to try and force. Many of you have raised teenagers. Hopefully a lot of you had curfews on those teenagers. Why? Because you had to force them to behave a certain way. For their own benefit, for their own safety. But freedom in our salvation says we don't need a curfew. Why? Because we're not going to put ourselves in that situation. We're already going to come in at that time. We're already going to live that way because we've been given freedom from the power of sin. I guess, I guess that's what it all comes down to even in our nation. The freedom that these men and women died for was not freedom so you could do whatever you darn well please. It was so that you could live life to the fullest and live it abundantly. Like it or not, this was established as a Christian nation. I don't care what politicians want to say whether we were or not. But the freedom is built on the same principle as the freedom that we have from sin in our lives. And so as you remember what God has done in your life, live it. 
Live in the power of that. Live it out fully. Remember what has been done for you. And allow God to flourish through you. I don't know what you're facing right now. You do. And I guess my question is, what stage are you at here? Do you see the need? Or have you already seen that and recognized that? Have you cried out to the Lord? Or are you still trying to figure it out yourself? Are you seeing how God's hand is at work in it right now? Or are you still living in fear? Maybe he's already answered it, and it's time you establish that memorial to remember what God is doing. And maybe, just maybe, he's already taken care of the need, and it's time for you to rest in him and quit being all worked up. You know, it amazes me how sometimes God can answer our prayers and take care of the situation and yet we remain all jittery and worried about it even when it's done. Let's get the most out of the life that God has entrusted to us. Let's live it to the fullest. Let's rest in Him and experience the abundance of life that God intends for us to have. Would you pray with me? Father God, thank you for your love for your presence with us, and for your guidance and direction, for your answered prayer. Every single time we lift our voices to you, you answer. You hear and you answer. That is amazing. Because we don't see that kind of faithfulness in much else in this world. But you are faithful. You keep your promises. You fulfill every single one of them. And the greatest of those that you love us. So Lord, let us live in your love right now. There may be some here this morning, in fact, I know there are a few here this morning who haven't gotten to that point yet of living in your love. They haven't taken that step of faith of what the boys and girls talked about, the symbolism of that cross. Yes, we understand Jesus died on the cross to free us from our sin, but we haven't received that and made it our own. There are a few here who need to do that this morning, who need to, to, to make that decision, take that step of faith and say, yes, I know I'm a sinner, but I also know that Jesus died on the cross to pay for my sins so I wouldn't have to, to free me from the power of sin. I want that in my life. I want to live in freedom, true freedom. Help them this morning, Lord, to seek that forgiveness, to ask for that forgiveness right now. And you who are faithful will forgive their sin and come into their life and be their Lord and Savior if they will but ask. Give them courage to do that this morning. For those of us who have taken that step of faith, Lord, I pray that, that we would learn to rest in you, to recognize how you are involved in our lives and how you answer our prayers and how you take care of us, to, to remember those memorials those markers in our lives of where you have been at work and to celebrate those. But most of all, Lord, help us to live out our salvation in the freedom that you have given every day without worry. Worry is a tool of the enemy. There's no room for that in your family. So help us not to worry but to trust and to rest in you. Encourage us now. Encourage each one of us to raise our Ebenezer and remember and live. Bless us, we ask in Jesus' name. This is a time of invitation now, a time for you to respond. 
God has spoken to us through the songs that we have sung. We've participated with Him in lifting our voice in praise and adoration to Him and lifting His name on high. He has been at work. We have heard His word. We've engaged in His word. The question is now, what are you going to do with it? So now, action is left to us. What will you do with what you have heard? This time of invitation is for you. The altar is open. If you'd like to come and pray, spend a few minutes talking to God about what you want to do from this point on with what you have learned. I will be here. A couple of our deacons will be here. If, if God is leading you to a decision or you need to pray with one of us, we would love to share with you. We would love to pray with you. Whatever it is that you need. Maybe, maybe you're here this morning and it's time that you take that step of faith and ask Jesus to be your personal Lord and Savior. I'd encourage you, come up. Let's, we'll answer any questions you have. Let's help you make the right decision now. But don't leave here without knowing God loves you and he's got a plan for you. And he wanted you here today because he had something to say to you. And he's calling you and I to action now. What will your action be? Let's stand together. As we sing, you step out and come. Good morning. A couple of announcements this morning. As was stated earlier, next week there's a Sunday school breakfast down in the fellowship hall at 9.30, not 9 o'clock. As Willie said, if you're there at 9, he'll put you to work. So that's happening next Sunday instead of Sunday school at 9.30 down in the fellowship hall. Uh, number two, Grand Oaks Camp for Kids is happening July 27th through the 30th. There are forms, registration forms over in the office for those. So if you have a kid who desires to go, uh, those are by the office, and that's for grades three through five, um, and that's going to be happening July 27th through July 30th. Also, this week is youth camp at Grand Oaks, and if you have a student going, we have, I think, 16 students going. Uh, they need to be at the church here at 845 in the morning, and we are leaving at nine, so be here at 845 so we can load the buses. Uh, we are leaving for Grand Oaks then, and last but not least, I was told this uh, recently, um, there is a blood drive happening Wednesday at the Methodist Church. I believe the time frame for that is 1 to 6 p.m. So if you desire to give some blood, that is happening over at the Methodist Church on Wednesday, May 30th. And that wraps it up. Okay, um, before, before Dawn comes to pray, let me just give you a very quick update on uh, where we are with our renovations. If you haven't made it up to the third floor, 
Uh, it doesn't look anything like it did before. We had some uh, great workers involved in that. Uh, all the rooms are framed out. All the rooms are um, drywalled out. Most of the rooms are mudded and taped. Several of the rooms are sanded. A few of the rooms are painted. Uh, we still have quite a bit more work to do, but this week uh, there will be work focused on uh, finishing some of the sanding and getting the painting going. So if you're a painter, uh, we, would, we would covet your uh, involvement. If you can come and give us a hand at any time, if you need to come in the evening or something, just let us know. We can have it set up so that you can help with that. We want you to be a part of that. That's what we've talked about from the beginning is uh, we would, part of our giving is the work that we do in association with that. Uh, we will be getting some flooring and some ceiling going in before long, so uh, anything you can help with. And uh, we continue to, to work at getting some bids toward the elevator direction. Um, so those of you who are still on the first floor, you're stuck on the first floor, you don't get a new classroom yet because uh, the elevator isn't in. And I'd get in trouble if I moved you upstairs without an elevator, I know that. So won't do that, but uh, encourage you, if you can help, we, we could use any and all help we can get as we continue to press on. Uh, work is going very well. I'm very impressed with the workers that we've had and all that's been going on with that, and it's looking great up there if you haven't seen it. There are pictures on Facebook for those of you who don't like to climb the stairs. You can check it out and see how much has been done, but I uh, wanted to give you that update. All right, Don, come and close us in a word of prayer, and then we'll sing a chorus as we go out. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, as we pause right now, Lord, as we do remember the lives we're given to enjoy the freedoms that we are enjoying in this country, Lord, we also want to remember the things that you're already doing in our lives, in the communities. Help us, Father, to put up memorials for you and to rest in that and to glorify you with you, Father. For we do ask in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Glory, glory, hallelujah, glory, glory, hallelujah, glory, glory, hallelujah, our God is marching on. I love you. Have a great week.